Okay, my name is Jack Tony. I'm a board member here at the Woodring Wall of Honor in Veterans Park, and I'd like to take the time to introduce our Ward 1 Commissioner and U.S. Marine, Judd Blevins. Judd Blevins is a fifth generation Oklahoman, born in Enid, raised in rural Garfield County. He attended school at Kremlin Hillsdale and attended Oklahoma College in Tonkawa and graduated from Northern Oklahoma State University in Alva. He received a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. In 2002, Blevins enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. He served in Fox Battery, 2nd Battalion, 14th Marines, 4th Marine Division, a reserve unit headquartered in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He was deployed to Iraq and was stationed in Al Assad Air Base in the Anbar Province. He was honorably discharged from the Marine Corps Reserve in September of 2010. In 2018, Blevins returned to Enid to take over his father's business and was elected to the City of Enid Commission this year. Judd will be our MC for this ceremony. Well, I'm gonna add a little deal to Judd. I also graduated from Quinlan High School. Oh. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. In the top 10 of my class. Oh, thank you. Out of I think it was out of, out of 13. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, Jack. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Judd Blevins, and uh, on Ward 1 City Commissioner, and on behalf of the City of Enid and Woodring and the Woodring Wall of Honor, I would like to thank you all for your attendance for the ceremony today. We gather here to recognize our nation's former prisoners of war and those who are still missing. We're honored to be joined today by two former POWs who endured cap captivity courageously and honorably during World War II and Vietnam. Please stand as we recognize Mr. R.D. Lawrence and Mr. Bill Shortfinger. Please be seated, everyone. So. If there are any family members of any former POWs or MIA personnel who are present today, please stand and be recognized. And if so, please do mention the name of your beloved one who is still missing or was a prisoner of war. Elaine Johns, Pat Buckley, Missing in Action, Vietnam. Thank you. To the families that are here today, whether you've been reunited or are still waiting for your loved one, thank you for your patriotism and your courage in the face of uncertainty. We appreciate all that you've given to this country. The National POW MIA Recognition Day was established by Congress in Section 1082 of the 1998 Defense Authorization Act. Since then, organizations such as ours have conducted events like this one to formally recognize those who gave an extra measure to protect our great nation. Last year, the National POW MIA Flag Act was signed into law, requiring the American flag and the POW flag to be flown prominently on federal properties, including the White House, the United States Capitol, war memorials, all national cemeteries, all, nas all military bases, and many more. This legislation reaffirms our country's commitment to our missing and ensures that the words emblazoned on the flag continue to communicate a clear message of our unwavering support and commitment to our nation's heroes. That message is simple. You are not forgotten. Private citizens, organizations, and businesses are free to display the POW MIA flag whenever they wish, and many like ours choose to fly this flag every single day. We do it to respect and to honor those who have been held in captivity and returned, as well as those who have yet to come home from past conflicts around the globe. Now, if I may deviate off the script for just a moment, I would like to um, Earlier this summer in the uh, ongoing war in Ukraine, a uh, dam had been destroyed 
And as the waters of this, uh, this occurred at a site of a very large battle that occurred in Ukraine during the Eastern Front of World War II. And as the waters of uh, this reservoir began to flood the surrounding areas and drain out, a lot of uh, World War II artifacts were coming to, to the surface. There was a lot of equipment that was showing up. And there were even some skeletal remains that began to appear. And most of these were, were German soldiers. There were helmets and various uh, pieces of military equipment that the Germans used. But there were also a lot of Soviet skeletons, believed to be soldiers, that were emerging. And I think that despite all that um, our country has, has not done correctly, I think that we have done this correctly. We have this value of returning our, our, our fallen to, to their home soil. And for me, the comparison with that is, I can understand why the Soviet Union didn't feel compelled to return the bodies of German soldiers to Germany, given the scale of that conflict. Although they should have done it because it was the right thing to do. But to not even make the effort to return the bodies of your own soldiers, I think, speaks to the banality of evil that was very common in the Soviet Union. And it's something I hope and pray that our nation never succumbs to. At this time, I would like to introduce Major David Roth, who will share remarks with us today. Major David Roth is the commander of the 71st Installation Support Squadron, 71st Mission Support Group, 71st Flying Training Wing, Vance Air Force Base, Enid, Oklahoma. He leads a team of 396 military, civilian, and contracted personnel. Responsible for the base, bases of civil engineering, communications and logistics readiness, logistics ready, readiness functions to include our four runways, 351 facilities, 242 privatized homes, two information technology networks, 289 vehicles, and 11,000 aircraft parts, supporting $2 billion in aircraft and assets at three geographically separated airfields. You think you've got a busy job, wow. <laughs> He received his commission through the Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps, graduating with a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. He's an experienced flight commander and joint the logistics officer. He is married to Miss Emily Roth from Whitman, Massachusetts, and they have three daughters, Carolyn, Cecilia, and Julianne. Major Roth. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Mr. Blevins and uh, Mr. Tony. And on behalf of all the leadership at Vance Air Force Base, thank you for the invitation uh, to be here and uh, to be part of such an important ceremony. You know, not only does this ceremony highlight our commitment to honoring and remembering every service member until they return home, but it connects us to some of the heroes who walk among us and the stories of POWs in our community, specifically Colonel Swartfinger, uh, Sergeant Lawrence, uh, it is an honor to be here in your presence today for a ceremony such as this. Uh, it's also a privilege to be here representing Vance Air Force Base, an installation named after Colonel Leon Vance Jr., who suffered an injury while leading his bomb group against enemy forces uh, over France. And uh, he himself was declared missing in action uh, after his aircraft went missing during medical evacuation back to the U.S. on July 26, 1944. As I read uh, the biographies and hear the names and stories from these prisoners of war's mission and actions and the veterans who are present here today, it stands out that they not only represent different services but different generations, highlighting the true timelessness of our nation's promise to all who put on the uniform and the families that love them. Our enemies, our technologies, and almost every aspect of our day of life vary widely between the 1940s, 1960s, and even more so today. But one thing that has not changed is America's commitment to remember and honor our POWs and those over 81,000 individuals who remain missing and unaccounted for. So I hope I'm wrong with this, uh, but it's more likely than not that our current generation of warfighters are also gonna see significant conflict. Um, and this commitment of honor and remembrance demonstrated through the stories and the embodiment of our nation's promise to always remember and always honor those who fought so valiantly for our freedom 
will, I believe, in some part spur the inherent patriotism in future generations of warfighters that will ensure the U.S. maintains a decisive edge in all future conflicts in whatever battlefield we may face. Just four days ago, uh, we commemorated the events of September 11th, 2001. This is another day of remembrance which most of us in this room remember very vividly. Um, yet many of the airmen uh, serving around the world today at places like Vance Air Force Base, based on their age, um, only remember these events through testimonies, texts, and archives of others. Um, and that's okay. I myself uh, grew up well after the wars in Korea and Vietnam had long ended, um, yet I was still surrounded by mentors and leaders in a small community who shared their experiences. It was their stories and commemoration of heroism and brotherhood that prompted myself and many others of my generation to put on the uniform. These men were influenced by models driven to action by the attacks on Pearl Harbor. They, in turn, fueled by service members who suffered in the trenches on the Western Front, 1917, 1918. Uh, and it is this lineage that is our profession of arms uh, that continues to go back generation after generation because every generation has momentous events experienced only by generations that came before them. But by sharing the stories of bravery, sacrifice, and commitment through events just like this one today, uh, they become ingrained as part of our ethos as a military community. Today, we specifically remember and honor the devotion and courage of all those missing and accounted for. We renew our commitment to their families. Your missing sons, daughters, fathers, and mothers are not forgotten. Uh, we demonstrate gratitude for their heroism, for their sacrifice of them and those fortunate enough to have returned home. As we honor and remember all of our POW MIA service members by sharing their stories, we recognize that these individuals have sacrificed everything to keep Americans and our way of life protected and that their stories fuel an entirely new generation, not only to follow in their footsteps, but to ensure their efforts are never forgotten. Uh, Colonel Swarfinger, Sergeant Lawrence, and to all other veterans and family members in attendance today, thank you for your sacrifice. Personally, thank you for the inspiration. Uh, and thank you for continuing to honor all these prisons of wars and mission in action whose sacrifices made in the name of defending everything we, whose sacrifices were made in the name of defending everything that we value so much here in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Major Roth, for those words. Uh, I will say it as, as someone who was 18 on September 11, 2001, it is uh, it's very surreal to know that there are now service members who were not even born uh, on, on that day. Um, please join me in a moment of silence as we remember those who are still missing. Following our silence, Ron Horner, chaplain of the Disabled American Veterans, will offer a prayer. Thank you for having me out here. I'd like to have a prayer for those that are here and not here, Lord, and if you just bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here this day to Lord God. It's already been mentioned. Remember those, Heavenly Father, who have served before us and those who are serving now. We especially lift up those, that, Lord, that were not able to come home, those who are missing in action, and those who are POWs there, Lord, that are still missing. Therefore, we lift up those who are on active duty today, Heavenly Father, who are here to defend our nation, Lord, even though they are many times not treated right. Lord, I thank you, Heavenly Father, to be able to be able to serve this nation, Lord God. Though I no longer wear the uniform, as many here have all felt, we still serve and are ready to defend our nation. Again, thank you for our freedoms. We pray for our leaders, Lord God. We pray for those around us. And then, Father, I thank you for this time, and I thank you for this place of honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. The Blue Star Mothers of America is a national organization supporting our modern day warriors. They are mothers who have children serving in the military, guard, or reserves, or have children who are veterans. They support each other and their children while promoting patriotism. The organization focuses on their, their mission every single day and never forsakes the troops, the veterans, or the families of our fallen heroes. 
They have nearly 6,000 members from over 200 chapters throughout America. For those who are able, please stand as our Blue Star Mothers Chapter 11 place a wreath at the missing man table to honor those missing and those still serving today. seated. Today at the Pentagon and in many other locations around the world, a ceremony similar to ours will be held. By being here today, you and I are part of a global effort to bring recognition to this noble mission and to remind the families of this special category of brave patriots that they are truly not forgotten. Following this ceremony, a wreath will be placed at Oklahoma's official Vietnam War monument by former POW Lieutenant Colonel Bill Shortfinger, United States Air Force, and the bell will toll 32 times for those Vietnam miss, for those service members from the Vietnam War who are still missing in action from Oklahoma, and once for Lieutenant Colonel Leon Vance and those missing from other er eras of war. Please feel free to observe the as this honor as we dismiss this service. Thank you all for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Lieutenant Colonel. Follow him out and observe the placing of the reaper in the 